This is an example of a time series and just some different vocabulary about time series. So here we have daily electricity consumption for a single household. Maybe it's my household. Um, measured in kilowatt hours. Uh, the units don't matter for this example. And so we imagine our sampling period starts on January 1st, 2021. But that's a lot to write out. So usually for the notation, we just use a little t subscript and so we'll have our t, and we'll just call this 1 because it's the first day in our sample. So here we have a daily sampling frequency. So t equals 2 would then be January 2nd, 2021. t equals 3 would be January 3rd, etc. And then our y sub t will be the value of the daily electricity consumption for that particular day. So maybe we used uh, 21 kilowatt hours on January 1st, 2021. Then we would write 21. So that's the value of y1. So just to get extra explicit, so here y1, so writing a 1 for the little t subscript equals 21. And maybe the next day we use uh, 23 kilowatt hours. So that's the next value in the time series. So we could also write y sub 2 equals 23. Um, maybe the next day is uh, down to 19 uh, and so on. And then we'll imagine we do it for a whole year and it's not a leap year. So there are 365 days and maybe that last one there's uh, 25 or something. Uh, so in this case, if this is the end of the sample, this is our capital T uh, is 365. So in other words, we have 365 observations and capital T is our sample size, 365. So that means our Y capital T equals Y 365, which equals 25. And then we can also think about our out of sample values. So we could, even though we don't observe this value in our data, we can still talk about big T plus 1, which would be uh, January 1st, 2022. Uh, it's just we don't see that in our data, but we, we might be interested in talking about it because it's something we want to forecast. Now, from this original time series, we can also talk about things like the first lag of the time series. So that's y sub t minus 1. Now when t equals 1, t minus 1 is 0. That's not in our sample, so we don't know what that is. When t equals 2, then t minus 1 is 1. So the first lag at t equals 2 is the value of the time series, the original time series, at t equals 1. 
So that's that 21 value. Similarly, when little t equals 3, then t minus 1 will be 2. So that value gets put in. So you can see we're just taking from the previous day's value and moving it up. There's also the first lead of y. So in that case, when t equals 1, we're talking about uh, t plus 1 is 2, so we're actually taking the second observation from the original time series and putting it in here. And similarly uh, there, so we're doing that. It's getting a little crowded in there. And then finally, the first difference of the time series usually written with this capital delta uh, and then a yt, which means yt minus the first lag. So yt minus yt minus 1. So given our table uh, up here, we can do that subtraction. We'll notice when t equals 1, the first lag we don't know, so we can't compute the first difference either. But then when t equals 2, we observe both the original value and the first lag. If we take the difference, 23 minus 21, we get 2. We'll fill in the question mark. Similarly, for t equals 3, 19 minus 23, now we get a negative value, minus 4. Sorry. So we can see if the series uh, goes up, we get a positive first difference. If the series goes down, then we get a negative first difference. And we could keep on doing that also. So that's uh, just sort of some of the basic structure and notation and terminology for a time series.